Alright, so I got my uh, Baylor Arms 15th Century Longsword out. I had uh, some comments about the flexibility of the blade. Uh, the the comments was uh, on a, uh, a 14th century Baylor Arms sword where it's a, a flat grind or just a normal flat blade. This one has a, uh, a center ridge in it. It's like a diamond cross section, but it's a hollow grind scooped. It's, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that it's a normal diamond would just be from the center here to the edge. It would just be like flat instead of like a hollow grind scoops it out, makes your sword a little lighter, a little easier to sharpen, just basically sharper, <laughs> easier to maintain the edge. It does, uh, you do lose a little bit of uh, rigidness, the stiffness in the blade doing that though, because you do take some weight and mass out of the blade. But, uh, I mentioned in the comments that 5160 is supposed to, uh, flex more than other steels. It's, it's a spring steel, springy. Uh, some blades that are like 1060 or the normal high carbon steels from like I don't know, 1095 is more likely to break than, but I was going to say uh, 1060 and other blades, they they don't flex as good. Usually if they flex, if they get past a point, they'll stay bent. 5160 blades, they usually, if the heat treat is good, they won't bend. I mean, they, they could, but usually the, they'll get to a certain point, like close to 90 degrees, a little less than 90 degrees, and they'll snap, but that's the, the toughness of the blade is that if you bend it that far, if it wasn't 5160 or a spring steel, it would have already bent to like a, you know, I don't know, I'd rather have the sword have a better chance of staying straight than uh, bending. If I hit it, you can see the flex in it. If I if I slap the, the pommel here, you can see that it does whip some, but that's that's a normal amount for a 5160 blade. blade. If you cut with it, like it doesn't flex at all. If you if you keep good edge alignment on it, Let's see. I'll try to get it where you can hear the sound of the, the wind. It's kind of hard to hear out here. ground I'm standing on isn't level, but with the weight of the, the length and the weight of the blade, it does droop a little bit if you turn it either way. It's not bent, it just droops down, but it's perfectly as expected. For the price range, I mean, it's pretty, pretty good. I've used it a lot, even off video cutting. It's held up good. Mine, uh, the peen on mine came looking kind of rough. The peen block was a little, I mean, it's on there good. You can't move it. There's no 
rattling. But it, uh, yeah. It's been solid. I think for the price, it's well worth the money, even if it has a few flaws. You know, it is peened. Mine could have been peened better, but... And the grip here, pretty nice cord-wrapped grip under the leather. Get a riser. It looks a lot like Dark Sword Armories or uh, Albion's, how they do their, their grips. For this price range of, uh, this one was 250 plus 20 for sharpening. I, I mean, it definitely has a better grip than most swords, like that windlass and even Hanway. All of their swords are just wrapped like plain leather, kind of slick. <coughs> Another thing too is the shape of the, the cross guard here. For this price, a lot of time the cross guards are just thick you know, pieces of metal, no shape to them, and way, way too big. This one here has got a nice elegance and refinement to it. The gap on it, between the cross guard, is, eh, it's not the best, but for this price range, it's pretty expected. <coughs> I think just in the blade alone and the construction of the sword it, for 250, <clears throat> you can't really do much better. At this price, a lot of the swords just have worse, worse grips, worse cross guards. Uh, blades are usually sometimes 1045, sometimes 1055, 1060. <clears throat> I'd rather have 5160 over those. And uh, also, usually ever weight too. This sword is super light. Try to get what you can see. Just one-handed. It literally just feels like an arming sword. It weighs about. This sword weighs three three pounds, I believe. Point of balance of about. I think it's just over three inches. Maybe a little under three. I don't know, it's close. But for a uh, almost 35 inch blade of a hand and a half sword, two handed sword, feels super light. Like literally, just finger of the guard, it definitely get some good point control with it. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I definitely feel pretty comfortable with this blade. It's got some flex in it if you hit it on the side. But if it, if you're going forward, try to do this straight. Try to do this at my camera maybe, through here. Alright, yeah, if you go forward, it doesn't move. <clears throat> Scabbard Fort's pretty good too. Better than most. You got a steel chafe. It is wood core wrapped in leather. Got some flanges at the top. See this wood core in there? <clears throat> it's it's pretty good. It does come out though, but holds it pretty good. Not much rattle in it. Pretty good fitting to it. <clears throat> 